do, 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 do. Here we go again. Yes, it's Sunday afternoon, and where am I? Am I indoors or am I outdoors? That is the big question. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. We are here together again. Yes, the world of English is a fun and exciting place to be. I'm so glad you could join me once again for my live English stream. And it's a Sunday. And as you can see, we are outside today. I thought we would do an outside live stream. So I have set the whole studio up out here. So it's all set up out here. Oh, Mr. Steve would be so pleased. Did you hear that? That is one use of the word set. But the big question is, will we be talking about the uses of the word set today? Hmm, I'm not sure. So here we go. And it is live English just for you. I hope you are feeling happy. How is your week been? Has it been a good week? I really, really hope so. Of course, we can't we can't have a Sunday afternoon without the live chat. So without any more delay, without any more hesitation, here it is. Today's live chat on the screen right now. Oh, but the big question is who was first on the live chat? Oh, I see. Tomek. Congratulations, Tomek. You are first on the live chat today. Thanks for joining me. Oh, by Duller is here. Also, Pedro. Hello, Pedro Belmont is here as well. Jirka. Jirka. I'm not even going to pronounce your second name because I'm sure I will get it wrong. Shirin is here. Shirin Ibrahim. Hello to you. Where are you watching at the moment? Also, Garcia is here and oh, Mika Ode. Hello, Mika, watching in Japan. A big hello to you. How is the weather there today? Is it OK? I, I pretty much think it is. I, I bet the weather today in Japan is lovely. Belarusia is here as well. Here once again, I am joining you for another live English. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mr. Duncan. How are you today? I'm OK, thank you. Not too bad. We have a very busy two hours. Yes, I am with you for two hours. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I'm outside. And of course, at this time of year, <clears throat> at this time of year, I do suffer very severely, severely with hay fever at this time of the year. So sadly, I, I, I am a victim of hay fever normally during this time of year. So I hope you will forgive me if my voice sometimes breaks because my throat is very sore and I might even sneeze today. I have a feeling I might sneeze now and again as well. So lots of people on the live chat. A very busy week here. Lots of things going on. Mr. Steve has been performing in his show and he actually had the last performance last night. So they they gave their final performance last night. And that means that Mr. Steve is now free. Mr. Steve is now as free as a bird. Isn't that nice? So Mr. Steve doesn't have to worry anymore about doing the show. So the only show that Mr. Steve has to worry about now is this one and yes for those who are wondering mr steve will be here later on did it get colder in here or is it just me i think it's you mr steve i definitely think it is you so mr steve will be here later on also lots of other things coming your way we have some clips from my full english lessons also, we will be taking a look at another camera that I have set up 
right here in the garden can you see just over there if you look over there you will notice that there is another camera in the distance and that is my B camera it is my B camera and the reason why it's over there is because I am going to hopefully have some live shots of the bees feeding from one of my little bushes in the garden so shall we have a look at the bee cam now would you like to see the bee cam right now I don't think there are any bees there at the moment <laughs> of course so there it is there is my live bee cam but it doesn't look as if there are any bees there at the moment which is a shame now earlier on there were bees everywhere it was covered with bees so can you believe that right now there are no bees whatsoever there aren't any isn't that just typical absolutely typical so earlier there were bees swarming all over it but now there are none unfortunately so it's live English on a Sunday I'm outside all of my neighbors are outside today because it's a beautiful day the weather is absolutely glorious so we are here oh of course there is some news that I have to give you for those who don't know we have some cows and bullocks at the back of the house now yes they came last week and there you can see some first pictures of the bullocks and also there are some some lovely cows there as well they are all very young animals they are not very old and there they are at the back of the house so they arrived on Wednesday evening last week and I was very excited so they arrived last week and I was a little bit worried because I thought we weren't going to get any animals at the back of the house so there you can see a, a collection of young cattle there are some bullocks <laughs> I will get mr. Steve to tell you the difference between bulls and bullocks there is a difference it's a rather painful difference as well so later on I will get mr. Steve to to tell you the difference between bullocks and cows and there is a difference between the two I have counted I think there are 11 10 or 11 bulls and cows or should I say bullocks at the back of the house so they are settling in rather well they, they don't seem as scared even though yesterday mr. Steve and myself we went for a walk yesterday and the bulls or the bullocks were following us they were actually following us and for a moment we thought they were going to chase us so we'll talk a little bit more about that later on because mr. Steve will be here yes are you excited <laughs> because mr. Steve will be here a little bit later on you may have noticed that the clock on my screen is actually wrong so I'm going to actually put that right I'm hoping I can put that right because I've had a few problems with the clock over the past couple of days I don't know why it always shows the wrong time and I don't know why so I'm hoping to put that right <laughs> how annoying is that I noticed earlier it was wrong and now it's wrong again all I have to do now is find the clock so I can put it right <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks you know this <laughs> let's see if I can actually correct the time there hmm well yes it isn't 12 it's actually 14 or should I say two o'clock so there hopefully that's right now let's have a look shall we is it right yes it is just after quarter past two on a Sunday afternoon I don't know what time it is where you are because I'm not there you see that's the reason why I'm not there so Steve will be here later on and of course you are more than welcome to join in on the live chat as well and we have the live chat I love farms and animals to be honest 
So do I. I like them very much. Charif, thank you very much for your comment. Yes, there's nothing there's nothing more relaxing than living in the countryside. I must admit I'm I'm rather enjoying the feeling today because the birds are singing. Everything is very very pleasant. And of course it's June. June has arrived as well. Carlos says, "Oh, thank you Carlos. Your garden is worthy of being on a magazine cover." Thank you very much. How kind of you. The bull looks with red eyes at you. Thank you, Caradas. Now, as far as I'm aware, cows and bulls do not see in colour, as I understand. They don't see in colour. I think they can only see in black and white. Mika Ode says, these days we can see some hornets oh yes they are very big very large wasps so they look like wasps but they are huge and we get hornets in this country as well and they are quite large in fact a couple of years ago I had a hornet stuck in my fireplace it came down the chimney and it got stuck in the fireplace so I had to rescue it and Mr Steve gave it some honey and then it regained consciousness and flew away so that was a rather nice moment as we saved the life of a hornet Shirin is here hello Shirin what time is it where you are apparently it is 4 17 so yes so you are slightly ahead of us by two hours Gia Curse says Mr Duncan have you got a pet <laughs> no I haven't although Sometimes I think Mr. Steve, Mr. Steve might be my pet. <laughs> don't tell him I said that, please don't tell him. Hello to everyone in this big community. Ernesto, I love you all. Thank you very much. We are together today for live English every single Sunday. And we are, of course, here every single Wednesday. You can see the details now on the screen. So my live English lessons are every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time and every Wednesday from 10 p.m. UK time. So don't forget that is UK time. So you have to work out what the time difference is between where you are and where I am. Thank you very much. And I've had a good response to my Wednesday night live stream. A lot of people saying we like your late and live stream because it means that we can join you at, at a better time especially people watching in South America because quite often they miss it uh, on a Sunday so it gives people in other parts of the world a chance to join in with the live chat which is nice back to the live chat talking of the live chat Hello, Mr. Duncan. I am very delighted to see you again. Your live streams make my day. Thank you, Tariq. That's very kind of you. Thank you for always being full of beans. Yes, I'm always happy. I'm always excited. Every morning when I wake up, I always wake up with a big smile on my face. And that ensures that the day will go quite nice or quite nicely. I know my life isn't perfect it isn't I have problems sometimes sometimes things annoy me many things annoy me at the moment quite often I get very annoyed by things connected with technology what about technology do you like technology a few days ago we had some changes here in Europe about privacy laws uh, across the internet so lots and lots of people who use your information now have to tell you how they actually use the information, how they actually use it. So that is something that has changed over the past few days. But there is one thing in particular that really annoys me about modern technology. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what really annoys me? Of all the things that occur and exist with technology what 
is the most annoying thing of all we will be talking about that a little later on right now we are going to have a look at an excerpt from one of my full English lessons and as a strange coincidence I am talking all about technology Here's a word that might be familiar to you. The word technology generally relates to any complicated tool that has been created to carry out a task of some sort. This task can be a simple one, such as adding up numbers, right up to the really complex and difficult ones, such as steering a jumbo jet or sending someone to the moon. There are some other words that relate to technology such as device, which is something that uses technology to function, such as a smartphone or tablet. They are types of devices. The device forms the hardware of the technology, while the programs and applications running inside are the software. They are both forms of technology. It is hard to imagine what life was like before modern technology came along. Technology is used almost everywhere now. In factories and offices, in our leisure pursuits, in our cars and homes, and perhaps in the not too distant future as a part of the human body. It would be fair to say that virtually all of the great technological leaps forward have occurred during the past hundred years. Since the discovery of electricity, our world has been magically transformed into an amazing wonderland where our thirst for information can be easily quenched and the human imagination is encouraged to run free. Do you like technology? Would you miss it if it wasn't around? What piece of technology do you use the most? A computer game? A mobile device? A super duper talking watch? Which piece of technology are you looking forward to using in the future? A flying bicycle? A driverless car? An artificial brain? A holographic TV perhaps? Will they ever be reality? Only time will tell. Here we go it is a Sunday and it's live English and I am out in the garden enjoying the beautiful summer weather and as you can see I have my my handkerchief ready my paper tissue is ready just in case I start sneezing because as I mentioned earlier I am suffering slightly with hay fever so I normally get hay fever at this time of the year and it is such a pain in the neck. So I have my, my box of tissues, my box of tissues right here, just in case I start sneezing. Mr. Steve is going to join us in a moment. He's going to pop around the corner and say hello. Isn't that lovely? The birds are out. Can you hear the birds? Yep, the birds are out. Everything is lovely today. It's a beautiful summer day here in the UK. Something special taking place at the moment here in Much Wenlock. The Much Wenlock Festival started yesterday. And Mr. Steve and myself, we were walking around the area in which the festival will be taking place. And here we are. 
here we are at the much Wenlock festival now we arrived before the festival started so you might notice that there is no one there at the moment <laughs> or certainly there was no one there when we were filming so that's why the area is empty there are no people to be seen but the, you might see mr. Steve there he is mr. Steve where are you going come back come back mr. Steve don't leave us so the much Wenlock festival started yesterday and this is a special event that happens every year quite often there are lots of cultural events poetry readings there are there is some acting taking place as well and also some music will be played live let's have a look in the tent and see what's going on So there it is the much Wenlock festival taking place at the moment and maybe Mr. Steve will talk a little bit more about that later on because Mr. Steve is very interested in culture especially performing on the stage especially when it comes to acting because Mr. Steve has been very busy doing his acting this week on the stage we will be talking about the performance and I, I might even give you my opinion of the show is it is it a thumbs up or is it a thumbs down from me we will find out later on the live chat is busy oh hello there thank you for joining me today so many people are on the live chat I can't believe it hello mr. Duncan I like technology because it helps people a lot yes I think so technology is very useful but I think sometimes it can be a real pain a real annoyance and there is one certain thing that I hate about technology can you guess what it is can you guess what the one thing I really hate about technology can you guess what it is Pedro I already noticed mr. Steve is a very cultured man well I'm not sure if Mr. Steve is cultured. Sometimes he can be very, very uncultured. Trust me. Simona. Hello, Simona. Nice to see you here. Hello to my favourite English teacher. I love your garden. Your garden. It has a nice view. Yes. All of the neighbours are out today. So in some of the gardens nearby, the neighbours are out and they are with their families and their children so you might hear some sounds behind me of people enjoying this summer day as well if you listen carefully the internet is one of the greatest inventions of humankind I agree Sergio I love the internet I, I, I don't think that the internet is appreciated for, for the good things that it does we often hear people talking about the negative things about the internet but it, but my own personal feeling is that the internet is a brilliant thing for example I can stand here live in my garden and talk to you in English and that will help you to improve your listening skills so from my point of view the the internet is an amazing thing I absolutely love it I really do so what's the bee cam doing do we have any bees on the bee cam yes we do we have a, oh oh come on come back oh don't go oh did you see that there was a bee then we had one bee on the bee cam and then it flew off I think it must be a very shy bee <laughs> come on come back where are the bees 
this morning there were bees all over this bush and now there are none typical <laughs> I think they must be very camera shy that's what I think anyway we will be dropping in on the the bee cam during today's live stream just in case any bees decide to join in Sujian says I love I like technology because of Mr. Duncan's English lessons oh thank you Sujian Sujin watching in South Korea of course all eyes are on South Korea and North Korea at the moment because it would appear that the peace summit is going to take place on the 12th of June so on the 12th of June the summit that was happening and then of course it was cancelled and now it's happening again on the 12th of June the leaders of North Korea South Korea and the United States will get together and have a chat and who knows what the result will be maybe something positive or maybe not we will have to wait and see do you done says hello Mr Duncan actually I can't imagine my day without enjoying your wonderful English accent I learned a lot from you thank you your English has penetrated my brain slowly but surely well that's good news thank you very much the more you listen to something the more you remember and the more of an impression it actually makes on you Matt says I think you should put some honey on the blossom <laughs> you know what I think that's a brilliant idea I think I might put some honey on the the bush behind me and maybe the the bees will come then so so I, I'm waiting for the bees to arrive let's have another look shall we just in case you never know and that's the beautiful thing about doing a live stream is you never know what is going to happen next so there it is the live bee cam the only thing missing are the bees unfortunately <laughs> isn't that just typical oh dear me Sajad Sajad Hussain says just now I joined you oh welcome you are very welcome it's Sunday afternoon and it's live English with Mr Duncan live from England when I was young my mobile phone was the public phone well yes the same here 20 years ago 30 years ago there was no such thing as mobile phones they didn't exist so what people had to do they had to go to a phone box or a public phone to make a phone call so you would have to lift up the phone and then put some money in and then dial the number or many many years ago you had to lift the phone up dial the number and then put money in after the person answered the phone so when they picked up the phone at the other end you would push the money in but not anymore you don't see many public phones anymore because most people have mobile phones they have their smartphones so we don't see many public phones anymore I know in some areas they still exist and of course they are very useful for emergencies so I think some people still use public phones and as I just said they are very useful if you have an emergency I'm happy because North and South Korea's peace at the moment Sujin yes I think so who knows what's going to happen it would appear that something very positive will will come from the peace summit so let us hope that something positive and maybe something that has a long-term change will occur as a result from the peace summit which is taking place in Singapore on the 12th of June just a few days from now mr. Duncan I think mr. Steve has got not only a personality but also plus years which require good intelligence 
yes he has a lot of skills mr. Steve and he is very knowledgeable very knowledgeable greetings oh you're saying hello to Lena Lena Palmia Palmira is saying hello to Lena I think there once was a fly on the wall I wonder why it didn't fall because its feet stuck or was it just luck or does gravity miss things so small oh I like that it's a little poem there thank you Sergio for your poem it is live English on a Sunday afternoon I'm outside right now and joining me for a few moments yes you know what's coming next mr. Steve is on his way and he's going to join me right now Guess what Steve I can smell food I think someone around here is having a barbecue that's what I think they are hello hello yes yeah, someone is firing up their barbecue as we say they are cooking food over an open flame well how are you mr. Duncan I don't know I feel very hungry now <laughs> now I can smell our neighbors nearby they are actually having a barbecue outside and all I can smell now it's the smell of hamburgers and sausages cooking on an open fire and <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you it's making me rather peckish rather hungry to be honest haven't you eaten enough this week mr. Duncan you didn't you eat about a pound of cheese this week well, that's not true I think you had a large block of cheese this week that's not true no that's a lie we bought a lot of cheese last Saturday and by Wednesday it's virtually all gone because <laughs> guess who had eaten it all there's still some left I will prove it later on I will prove how much cheese there is left I haven't eaten all the cheese I know where it's gone don't it's believe it's gone round here round Mr. 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 Duncan's middle they, they can't see that <laughs> fortunately they can't see my middle my middle is getting very large because I'm eating a lot of cheese a lot of cheese and a lot of chocolate yes but they they taste so good <laughs> That's the problem. As Homer Simpson once said, why do all the tasty things, why have to, why do they, oh, that was terrible. I, I, I give up on that. Why do all the nice things taste, no, what, <laughs> what is, what does Homer Simpson say? Well, I, I think it's why do all the, the bad things taste so nice. Oh, that's it. Well done, Steve. We can tell that Steve <laughs> is an actor. I really messed that up. <laughs> I had that in my head. And then when I when I came to say it, it didn't come out. Why do all the, what was it again? Uh, why do all the bad things taste so nice or so good? Or why, taste so. why do all the bad things taste so good? You're pursuing with that uh, that imitation there. <laughs> my terrible <laughs> my terrible imitation of Homer Simpson. <laughs> I, I've also noticed on the camera it looks like my hair my hat is disappearing into the clouds. <laughs> I, I like it is I like that it looks like my hat is disappearing into the sky because hello of... everyone who's saying hello to me hello how am I I'm tired today but I'm going to perk up for this show mr. Steve has had a busy week I've had a busy week yes I've been uh, as you know uh, appearing uh, in an amateur production this week which has been uh, Brought with problems. Yes, you've had a few problems uh, with your show, uh, but um, we, we have an exclusive picture, by the way, of Mr. Steve on the stage. So let's see if I can find it. I have so much to do today, by the way. So here is Mr. Steve <laughs> actually on the stage, and there is something you will notice. Yes. Something straight away you'll notice. So there is Mr. Steve on the stage with, with his leading lady, Fedra, her name is, isn't it? Fedra. It is. She's, She's a, a, a very, uh, uh, a very good uh, soprano and uh, soloist, and a very good uh, actress. You, Mr. Steve sounds like he has a cold. I might, yes, because I've been using my voice so much, it's dropped <laughs> a few tones. <laughs> 
And I can talk very low now. Because I've been, I mean, three nights we've been used. I've been, well, really, I mean, if you include all the rehearsals, I've been constantly talking and singing and trying to project my voice for about the last uh, seven to ten days. Yes. So it's suffering slightly. Yes, I've noticed your, your voice today <laughs> seems a little, little rough that's well, through overuse yes and mine mine is also a little bit rough because of the hay fever what do you notice that's missing from there so there is something missing from this picture isn't there there is something missing something mr steve had the other day that is now missing let's have a look at mr steve last week now this is mr steve last week playing the part in the show and can you spot the difference can you see the difference hello mr duncan and all your lovely viewers all around the world so there it is what's the difference can you see the difference <laughs> there is a slight difference isn't there there is a difference yes because mr oh what what are you doing steve <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't know what Steve, Steve keeps doing things next to me and I don't know what, what, what are you actually doing there? You were doing something. I was, but I decided not to do it in the end. Yes, that lovely wig. <laughs> yes, Mr. Steve didn't have his wig. Here it is. Here is the actual Here wig. Is the actual wig. So this is, this is Santos. What is Carlos, it? The, well, this is, I, I was trying to look Spanish. Yes. And I thought, um, he can't get his hands off it and <laughs> that's better so no, no, then i think i'll keep that on because now now that's not interfering with the uh, the sky so you can see where my hat ends that looks quite nice i think this might be a new fashion you know uh, you can have hat wigs so you can have a wig that you actually put on your hat so there it is i think i'll keep that on there that looks yes. quite nice so guess <laughs> why I didn't ha have that wig on during the actual production because that was the actual show. Mr. Duncan took a picture and uh, I didn't have it on. No, you didn't have your wig on. Have a guess why. Um, well, <laughs> well, not you. I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> I, I know why. I know you know why. I wasn't looking at you. I was looking at the camera <laughs> to ask our wonderful viewers why they think that in the end I didn't wear that wig uh, so we'd like answers please on the live chat and anyone that's been in uh, sort of productions of anything might well be able to guess uh, Genghis Khan <laughs> sorry somebody said there I look like Genghis Khan oh I see uh, it, it was a, a brutal killer from the from the past <laughs> but yes I didn't have the hair on during the production. Why do you think in the end I didn't wear the wig? And do you think I look better with the wig playing a Spanish pirate or without the wig? Uh, yes, Ernesto, I am ready for Hollywood. I was hoping actually that during the production this week there would be some Hollywood producers in the audience who would come to the dressing room afterwards and ask me to be part of their next Hollywood blockbuster film. There, but sadly, it didn't happen. There are some messages about your wig. Um, maybe because the, the maybe because the wig would keep falling off. Maybe it is because it would be very difficult to keep it on the head, says Tomek. Well, good guess, Tomek, but that, that's, uh, that's not the, the answer. It in fact is is quite sturdy on my head. Yes, it fix fixes on very well. Mr. Steve fixes uses very well. Mr. Steve uses very high quality glue. Well, it's actually just uh, elastic <laughs> uh, that is on the inside of the wig, so it keeps it on uh, very very securely. But uh, I wore it in the dress rehearsal, and then I didn't wear it to the uh, actual performances. Uh, so try to guess. Oh, you, Aurora can hear an aeroplane. And uh, somebody else earlier said they could hear people talking. That's because we've got a, somebody's holding a barbecue party in their, uh, in their garden next to us, or a few, uh, a few doors away. Uh, so consequently, we can hear people 
and they've got families and friends visiting. It's lovely weather, so they're all outside, probably having a few glasses of wine or beer. Mm. And, uh, and uh, they're cooking all sorts of meat on a barbecue, hot charcoal, and uh, it smells very nice. And uh, we haven't been invited, have we, Mr. Duncan? So we, that's we haven't. a bit of a surprise, seeing as we're so popular. They haven't invited <laughs> us, I thought. But then again, we couldn't, we couldn't go there anyway, could we? Because of the uh, live stream that we have to do. We could have done a live stream from the actual barbecue, I suppose. Oh, what's this then? Ah, this is the programme. A few people are asking, what did I perform? Uh, and it was Amateur Dramatics uh, Musical Comedy. And uh, here I've got a programme here to show you. So I'll be able to show you exactly what I was performing. Uh, oh, you're yeah, back on. I didn't know I was back on. There we go. <laughs> I was looking at the chat. San... <laughs> go the right way. San Marino. Which, uh, in fact, is a very small country somewhere in Italy. Uh, there is actually a place called San Marino. They've got a very bad football team, apparently. Oh, <laughs> We're talking okay. about football. Careful what you say. It's the fifth la smallest country in the world. Uh, but the San Marino we're talking about here is a fictitious island in mm. the Caribbean. Fictitious means... Spanish. Fictitious. It means it's made up. Yes, it's not real. It's not real. So something that has been created for artistic purposes. We can say that it is fictitious. It is fiction. It Unlike is, this, which is reality. This is reality. Lots of things are, are happening around us. You, would, you wouldn't believe how much chaos there is going on around us as the sun comes out and the wind blows and the birds are singing and... Oh, Parties can, next door. I can smell. I can smell that food. It's making me feel very hungry. I'm sure we'll have a barking dog. Anyway, let's give, a, a, <laughs> give an answer to why I didn't wear the wig. Well, the answer is... The producer of the show said that he thought it didn't look right. Yes. So uh, he told me not to wear it during the actual production. So the producer said, Steve, we don't want you to wear the wig. We yes. Don't, no, you can't wear the wig. So, so I thought the wig looked amazing. I thought it really did look like Mr. Steve had some character. But when it came to the actual performance, Mr. Steve was I told... Was told Sorry, that is not suitable. Uh, you can't wear it. And of course, the producer, uh, you have to obey what the producer says. So uh, I took it off. You must obey. I was obey. a bit annoyed about it because uh, yeah, you came to see the show and you, you, you said I look like Emperor Ming. Yes, <laughs> uh, I don't think anyone's going to know who Emperor Ming is. Emperor Ming, if, if, if you um, From Google Flash Gordon. Yes. Uh, which is a sci-fi series from sort of 1950 or something. It's a, it's a sci-fi fit. Yes, but well before that, um, I think it was the 1930s. Yes. 1930s. Uh, Flash Gordon uh, is a character, a superhero. He was, I think, he started out as a football player, and then he became someone who saved the universe. But he wasn't actually. He didn't have any special powers. So Flash Gordon was just a, a very good athlete, uh, but he didn't have any special powers. Uh, so Flash Gordon, and there was a villain called Emperor Ming. And I think Mr. Steve looks a little bit like the Emperor Ming right there on that picture. Yes. I do. So I, don't, I wanted to look like a Spanish pirate, which is what I was supposed to be doing. But never mind, it's, it was enjoyable. Everything went well. We were a bit under rehearsed, but we got it. We we got the show out, and the audience seemed to like it. Apart from Mr. Duncan. Apart from me, wasn't I, I wasn't that keen on it. I I didn't like the show. I found it a little long. It was very. It, the first half went on for such a long time. It was about an hour and twenty minutes. The first half, and I thought this is like the whole play. This is like the whole thing. It, it went on for so long, and. I was falling asleep. I, I can't sit through very long things, especially if the story doesn't interest me. And I wasn't very interested in it, to be honest. So He so doesn't I, like these shows. I, I know I like some shows. And the music was very bland, and, and it was all just very the music long. music was very nice. Some of it. 
The only music I recognised was was or I liked was one that sounded like something else. So it sounded like they stole it from someone else's music. But that's just my opinion, you see, as a human being on planet Earth. There were uh, there was at least one member of the audience uh, last night who was asleep. Uh, which is never a good sign. No. But then most of the members of the audience were probably over 70. Well, that proves my point. Yes, we were. We, I was surrounded because I went to see the show on Friday night and I was surrounded by old people in the audience and also on the stage as well. So so the people in your in your theatre company, the, 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 the one you were performing with the other night, the thing is that they're, they're all very old and I was in the audience and I felt so young. I felt like a teenager in the audience. And and because everyone around me was about 70 or 80, one or two people could just about get up the steps. But the these, of course, this is the trouble now. If, if anyone out there watching does any amateur performing, it's very difficult to uh, get people to join amateur dramatic societies now. Yes. Uh, young people. Uh, because young people now don't see that as hip and trendy. No. Uh, they want to watch X Factor, maybe, or they want to. They want sort of very showy things or rap music. You know, it's, it's, everything's moved on from these sort of old style do, sort do, of operettas. Do we still call? Uh, do we still call it rap music? Isn't it R and B now? R and B probably. Is it R and B? They don't call it rap anymore, do they? Unless something's got R and B music in it now. Nobody under sort of twenty has got the slightest interest in it. <laughs> I always think but, modern singing, modern modern popular music, always sounds like someone is, is is has just dropped something on their foot and they're just screaming. That's what it sounds like to me. So what we're finding in 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 these sort of societies now is that the because we're not getting new people joining, uh, all the cast members are gradually getting older and older. Uh, and so is the audience, because the audience who still like these old shows are getting older and older. So eventually, they're all going to—they're all going to, they're all going to uh, cease to exist. Mm. Unfortunately, it's quite a shame. Uh, it's some, very... of the, some of the bigger companies will carry on that attract uh, young people who then want to move on to do. Because there's always going to be people who want to do stage work and go on and and, uh, and go to uh, you know study dramatic arts and things like mm. that but uh, so for the average amateur that these sort of I think they'll die out it's quite sad really yes I think one of the things you see one of the things that some people do they join an amateur dramatic group because they want it as a step up to something else so they want to learn about acting so they use it as a stepping stone but at the moment it's very hard certainly for the because you belong to more than one group and, and all of them yes all of the members are very old I don't mean that in a negative way I'm just saying that, that it just happens that everyone in the company in these theatre companies they're all old and I, I felt like a like a young boy at the and you're in your 50s yes and I'm in my 50s and I felt I felt so young surrounded by all these people who were coughing and they couldn't stand up and they couldn't walk and oh my goodness it was somebody that Essanol, Essanol man is a uh in uh, Debenhams in London. Yes, uh, Essanol is a, is a regular viewer. He, he goes to Oxford Street, Debenhams, and he watches me in the internet, oh. internet cafe. Wow, yes. that's fantastic. Yes, it's very nice. <laughs> I hope you're having a nice day in London. Is it sunny? Is the sun shining in London? Mr. Steve, watch the, the record on 2018 of May. Mm -hmm. And you will see YouTube put subtitles. Are you really? What? I don't know what that means. Oh, maybe they've, uh, maybe the subtitles haven't picked up what we said correctly. Oh, I see. Let's write that down. Oh, I see. Thirtieth yes. of May. We'll relook at that. Maybe <laughs> there's what, what? What? Yes, we'll have a look at that. Sometimes YouTube subtitles, which are generated by their own system on YouTube sometimes the, the the subtitles don't appear correctly and, and I know this is something I always do I always have a check to make sure there aren't any swear words there aren't any naughty words so I always make sure that there are no swear words or things that have been 
<laughs> translated incorrectly so that's what I do you see I always try to anyway so I will have a look at that oh maybe no I've maybe uh, Vitas Pangonis if that's your if I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, you want to re actually so maybe it's it's okay but uh, whoever it that you know wants to actually say it the way oh, we've see. done it so uh, we can't won't be able to look at it right now no but we'll have a look at that and uh, VTAS maybe if you look in next time we'll, we'll have a look what that is yes I'm a bit confused and, uh, I don't quite know what that's about so <laughs> shall we move on because <laughs> I'm a bit confused there it doesn't take a lot to confuse me to be honest so we have the live B cam oh yes no expense spared today we have the B cam and look there are no bees oh you should have put it on that other bush mr. Duncan oh, there's an ant I just saw a little ant but but yeah, but earlier that was covered with bees, Steve. That had bees all over it. Oh, they've all gone for a rest. They've all they're all shy. I think the bees are a little bit shy. So that's the reason Maybe why. Maybe we be us being here is putting them off. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think bees are normally that afraid, are they? You know? They can always turn around and sting me if if I annoy them too much. <laughs> so we are here live. Mr. Steve has been doing some 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 searching on the internet today because you're thinking of buying something, aren't you? Yes. Uh, now I'm just wondering, where do you buy your things from? Do you still go to the shop in person? Do you still visit the shops and buy things in person, or do you buy things now off the internet? Do you like that? This is how I <laughs> type, by the way. When I type, this is how I type. That's looks, your. Uh visual that's the way you're describing the internet shopping this, on the internet shopping on the internet there i am this is what i do you see it looks like a couple of dancing spiders it's Bubble. very annoying <laughs> i will stop now <laughs> so what do you do so steve what what have you been looking for though because you're you're looking to replace something aren't you i am mr steve is going to replace something let's have a quick look so here first of all on the screen let's have a look so these are two oh. tools that Mr. Steve has and is going to replace one of them but which one is it which one are you going to replace Steve oh it's this one okay then you need to come a bit closer but I was showing the whole thing then I I'll show it if you want okay. and you can talk about it <laughs> that is an extendable hedge trimmer and it's battery operated so I don't have to use any cords or any petrol so this uses a battery and that's very useful if the hedges are very tall and I need to clip them at the top unfortunately I've only had this a year it wasn't very expensive it was quite cheap and uh, that shouldn't even work did you see what I did then I just made it work <laughs> uh, but the battery has failed can I go and cut something I don't think you'll be able to I'm going to try and cut. Shall I try and cut something? Let's, he won't be able to cut anything. Are you sure? Yes. I'm going to try and cut. Because it something. does that for about two seconds and then stops. But but so so the problem is the battery now doesn't work properly. It doesn't hold its charge and That's it's it. only well it's not even a year old. So you're thinking of getting a new one? I've got to get a new one and I'm going to have to spend more money because that's obviously a cheap, nasty battery, and I can't replace the battery because they don't do this model anymore. So I'm going to shop online and get myself a new one. Oh, so that's what you've online. been... Online. Online. This is buying... This is online. what I... So when you want to show someone that you're buying something online, you do this. <laughs> online. With both hands. I, I feel a bit nervous with you holding this because you never do any gardening whatsoever. This is true. Uh, and I'm not sure that your wrists are strong enough to actually hold that. I have, <laughs> well, as you know, I have very weak wrists. See, look at my wrists, they're so weak. Floppy. I Hopeless. Have very floppy wrists. They'd be no good in the garden. Uh, well, I, d I think that's his excuse. So what is Mr. Duncan going to try and do, and do with that? It won't work. It works for about two seconds and then stops and you can no longer recharge the battery. Uh, so we might get one little twig off. <laughs> can you see me? Oh, no, you Go on, see. I'll move aside. Yeah, 
I just cut. I just. I just cut something off the tree. It shouldn't have worked. I, it wasn't working yesterday. I did some gardening. Did that's, you see that? That's the first and only time I'm going to let him hold my equipment. That's that brilliant. shouldn't have worked. That's brilliant. Because it wasn't working. <laughs> OK. That's interesting. It wasn't working yesterday. Sorry about that. Oh, maybe I don't have to buy a new one after all. Ah, oh, you see, I fixed it. I'll put it back down. Maybe I fixed it. Oh, did you see that? Yes, it looks as if I've I fixed Mr. Steve's power ah, tool. Ah, you know what the difference is? Hmm. I haven't put the extension tube on. There is a, a, a separate section, an extension tube. Hmm. That makes it longer. That makes that longer. Ah. So maybe there's a fault with that. So maybe there's a problem with the thing to make it longer and that's perfectly and all that's right. that's perfectly all right. Ah. So I don't have to spend any money. Did you see what I did there? I solved the problem. I solved it for Mr. Steve. Well, isn't it's, I... because, it's because we're here online live and I wanted to demonstrate that. I didn't bother putting the very long extension. I think we've... I might save myself £160. Oh. I know what Mr. Duncan's doing now. He can't resist putting that black wig on. That's better. It just looks better on camera because my hat keeps disappearing into the sky. Yes, but perhaps that's not what the viewers are seeing. <laughs> perhaps the viewers can see your hat perfectly. Let's see what's happening on the live chat, Mr. Duncan. Wait there, I'm going to sneeze. We're abandoning the live chat. I'm and going you know. to sneeze. <coughs> Maybe you could have done that off camera. No, it's more interesting. <clears throat> oh dear, I'm sorry about that. My hay fever, my hay fever is now starting to get worse. Well, you did want to come outside, Mr. Duncan, and this is what happens. That's right, yes, that's what happens when you go outside with hay fever. Do you want to see the makeup that I use on stage? Anyone want to see that? Does anyone want to see Mr. Steve's makeup <laughs> that he wears? I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's going to want to see that, to be oh, honest. Oh yes, Gracie says, use a ladder. Uh, or later uh, should be two D's in there sorry to correct you there uh, I could use a ladder but the tr problem is I don't like going up on ladders holding bits of heavy equipment because it's not very safe I just sneezed uh, so I prefer to stand on the ground and use equipment that will reach up rather than go on ladders because uh, it's dangerous mm. and I've nearly come a cropper a few times. When we say come a cropper, it means you've nearly had an accident. Uh, and we don't want accidents. We don't want to end up in the accident and emergency department. You wouldn't believe how many people every year gardening end up in hospital. Yep. With, with actually severe... A lot of people fall off ladders doing things. Mm. It's the commonest thing at home. One of our neighbours, one of our neighbours who, who likes to go up into trees, he's actually fallen out of a tree twice. And he's broke his back last time. And uh, there's all sorts of things going on out here today. <laughs> it's a busy day today. Perhaps a Vulcan bomber will go over later. <laughs> uh, well, that would be amazing if it is because they don't fly anymore. <sighs> That's someone's car alarm. It is, yes. Well, we've got everything going on out here today. That's great. Who's the leading woman's role? She's quite a looker. Yes, exactly. She is. She is very attractive. I'll show you again. Ma many of the men like oh, Fedra. Mr. Duncan can show the uh, show the clip again. Oh, it's not a clip. It's a photograph. Photograph. <laughs> I can't show the clip. Mr. Steve won't let me. I wa I actually recorded some of it with my with my camera. Uh, but Steve says, no, no, you can't play any of it. So uh, so he, he's forbidden me. Yes, Listen. that's, uh, that's, uh, she's a lovely, lovely lady. And uh, I've performed many times on stage with her. And uh, we've, I think we've got quite a good chemistry uh, on stage. Yeah, I you, think, well, people tell us we have, so. You, uh, you go together very well when you're acting together. Yes, and, and she's a lovely person, but nobody's, we're not trying to upstage each other or anything like that. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, upstage, it means you're trying to appear better yes. than the other person by trying to deliberately trip the other person well, up on the stage. Well, up, 
Well, what not trip them up? You're trying to well, do, trip do... them up, you know, vocally. Yes, yes. Or, no, I don't mean literally trip them up. Well, upstage can also be direction as well, can't it? Yes, so, upstage. If you cut yeah. in cut in front of somebody on the stage, say if I was to stand no, back a no, bit. No, up, upstage is also direction, isn't it? So upstage, yes. upstage can be a direction on the stage. It can be, yes. And also to upstage is to what? Is to is to uh, assert your dominance on the stage over somebody else. So if you move back a bit, I can. So if I was to upstage you, Mr. Duncan, I would sort of come in front of you like that and sort of take over. Yes, I'm the star here. Uh, so I've sort of upstaged you there, and uh, Mr. Duncan has now flounced off. Flounced off. That means he's upset uh, because <laughs> I've upstaged him. But then it's not difficult to do. You know, when you're a star like me performing, then uh, obviously people of lower rank uh, will have to defer to my greatness. <laughs> Come back, Mr. Duncan. Where have you gone? <laughs> he's gone to, uh, I think he's gone to that barbecue uh, uh, with the neighbors, because it is down that way. So maybe someone will throw him a sausage uh, or a hamburger over the fence because he's obviously desperate uh, to, uh, to, to get some food. Personally, I don't like to eat meat off a barbecue uh, because it's burnt meat. I don't like burnt meat. Probably gives you cancer. So, Mr. Duncan's disappeared. He's left me in charge, so I'll show you the program. I'll show you some of the makeup that I use on stage. And, uh, well, first of all, this is what I... Because when you're on the stage, the lights are very, very bright. So you have to... Uh, out of the way, I'm, I'm uh, doing something here, Mr Duncan. Uh, so I use this uh, makeup foundation. And because it, when you've got pale white skin like me and the bright lights are on you, then uh, you, you, you look like a corpse. You look like a dead person uh, when the lights are very bright. So you have to make your skin a bit darker and, and I use this all over. Uh, and uh, I've got various colours, various different colours. I've got something for just brushing, you know, putting a bit of on my cheeks. Uh, there's another darker one. Is anyone really interested in this? Yes, well, you know, a little bit on there, like that. There we go. Just to give me a bit of enhancement. Uh, I think you, I don't think you need makeup. You need a time machine. And that, thanks, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> and of course, to show your eyes up, you have to put a bit of a dark eyeliner on. Otherwise, your eyes don't show up on the stage. I have, this is just used for the stage. I do not repeat, I do not use this in my everyday life, only on the stage. There is no way I'm using any of these things uh, on the stage, uh, or in real life, only <laughs> on the stage. It's my makeup bag. Very manly looking bag, don't you think? This is a very, man, very manly, very macho. I've got in here. Very, very macho. Oh, look, this is what I use to take the makeup off. Women will be very familiar with this. That's eyeliner remover. And that's uh, moisturizing wipes. So welcome to go. our new live stream, which is makeup for transvestites. Oh, look. And ladyboys. That's what that is. What? That's the special glue for sticking uh, the moustache on. Oh, is this what you use for putting... So you may have noticed that Mr. Steve had a moustache and a, a little beard. Where is it? I'll find it again. There it is. So, so this glue will actually stick it. Oh, I, I think Mr. Steve is going to do <laughs> it now. He's going to give us a live demonstration. Oh, OK, let's have a look then. So Mr. Steve is now going to give us a live demonstration of sticking on a moustache. I, I need a mirror. How about that? It's Not very good. Straight. It's very dignified. That's fine. <laughs> That's very good. That's very dignified. There we go. Yes, it makes you look very uh, charismatic. The thing is, you're always worried that it's going to come off. Because every time you do something like that, you can feel the glue slipping. And, uh, and anyway, it takes about, you have to leave it about 
two minutes to set. Okay. And then uh, there we go. Set. Set. It's set. Set. Ah. Set. See how he got excited there. So yeah, if something sets, it, it goes hard. Uses of the word set, Mr. Duncan. Uses of the word set. Okay, you can have one. Glue that is like this. Where's it gone? <laughs> Glue, and then you put it on something and it goes hard. That is use of the word set. Set. It sets. Jelly, if you're making jelly and you stir it up in the saucepan, pour it into a mold and it sets and it goes well, harder and then you put it in the fridge. Yes. Solid. Something that's setting. Concrete. Yes. If you're mixing concrete uh, for, uh, uh, for putting, laying bricks, uh, cement, uh, that will set when it goes hard. It means it goes hard. Just so just, I've got a use of the word set in there. I feel like there's a stranger standing next to me now because Steve has this moustache. Keep that on, it looks good. It looks very good. It, it makes you look very sophisticated. <laughs> you look like an explorer. You should look, so, uh, you look like you should be going off into a tropical jungle somewhere. They're the other bits that I use. Oh, Mr. Dungeon's twitched it No, could come back, Steve. There we go, look at that. That's what I use, moustache. That's how you spell the word. Moustache. 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 And that's because... made with real human hair. I don't know why you're doing that. It won't be in focus, Mr. Duncan. No, on this camera it will. <laughs> Eventually. There we go. It's in, in focus now. Oh. So there it is in focus. A moustache. And it is 100% human hair. Yes, but where do they get the hair from? That's yes, what I want to know. yes, because it does look a bit fuzzy. So I'm wondering which which part of the body, or what part of the body that's come from. See, I had that bit on there. I made this one myself. This one uh, I I bought, but this this bit I made myself. This tip there. You know, You're making such a mess. Into Carlos Santos. You're making such a mess here. I'll keep it on. I might as well. It's stuck on quite well now. Little bird. Yes, Matt Boone says it, it, maybe it used to be pubic hair. Yes, that's what we were thinking. It certainly had a had a bit of a smell. Yeah, so uh, here we are, live. I've got a moustache on today. It looks like Steve is going to go into the jungle, <laughs> in, in like an explorer. Yes, I am uh, Stephen Livingstone. Wasn't there an explorer so called somebody Livingstone? Dr. Livingstone. Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Dr. Livingstone, he, he bumped into someone, he met someone, and the famous quote is, Dr. Livingstone, I presume. We don't know where that's from. Maybe uh, someone can tell us. I'm sure they will. They, they all know how to use Google. <laughs> I suddenly feel more in control, more oh, in charge. Yeah. Oh, I've got this moustache. It gives you a bit of authority. A master of disguise. Not Nicole says, are you a transvestite, Mr. Steve? Would you like to wear ladies' clothing? Maybe it is your fantasy. Well, oh, no. Nicole, you might be right there. You know, I've always thought this. Well, I like, I do like dressing up. <laughs> um, but, but no, I would not describe myself as a transvestite. You like dressing up, but not in ladies' clothing. A transvestite is somebody who likes to regularly dress up in women's clothes. Yes. I like to do it for fun. So it isn't, a, uh, it isn't, a, but it, there, there, is, there is a thing to always remember. So a transvestite isn't, isn't a man who wants to be a woman. It is a man who feels comfortable in women's clothing. So he, he, he doesn't want to be a woman but a transvestite just enjoys wearing women's clothing. So, yes, there you go. <laughs> Whereas, uh, no, I wouldn't describe myself as that. <laughs> not, not outside with all the neighbors listening. Do you, uh, have a, do you have a cold, Mr. Duncan? No, Gracie, I don't have a cold. I have hay fever at the moment. I have been suffering with hay fever. Do we have any, <laughs> any bees on the bee camera? No. No, that oh, was a waste did, of time. Did you Mr. see Duncan? that? There was one, but it, it disappeared. We had one earlier, but it stayed on for about two seconds and then flew off. So I think they know that I'm filming them. I think they actually know 
that my camera is pointed there. I think that. Oh, wait there. There's one. Oh. Did you see that? It didn't stay for. Oh, oh it's, it's come back. back. Yes. Oh, yes. We had a we had a bee then. Did you see the bee? Did everyone see the bee? Can you please tell me that you saw it? Well, it didn't stay for very long. I don't know why. There it was. The highlight of today's live stream was that bee. It was. Surely it was me putting the moustache on. So what is the most annoying thing about technology? There is something I really hate about technology. Oh, I don't know where to start? There, and this is something that Steve will also appreciate. I hate passwords. I hate passwords. I'm with you on that. Passwords. You have to enter your password. And now YouTube has, has made some changes with the way you, you, you log onto their platform. It's really annoying, actually. So if I want to use the live chat now, so there it is. You can see the live chat. But if I want to use it on, on my live stream, I have to enter a password and then I, ha I have to have something sent to my phone and then I have to go to my phone and press a button and then I have to go back to the computer and press something else. It's so complicated. So I don't know why they, they, sh they should know by now that it's me trying to log into my own account. But it's really, really annoying. I find it annoying at work because we've got uh, uh, obviously a laptop for work and you have to use a password but you need three separate three separate passwords to get into it for Oof. a start so when you first start put the computer on you have to put something else put a password in and then when it's all after about two minutes when it's loaded everything you have to put another password in and then if you want to go into any of the applications any of the apps they will have their separate passwords as well uh, they time out after five minutes and you have to change them every two months yes so, so you end up with about you don't know what password you've got to use for what and then if you keep putting it in too many times of course it locks you out yes we just used the word there time out time out so time out means that the the time that, that you are given to do something has ended so you only have a few moments to do something before it will stop you from doing it so that's another annoying feature that some computers have. They have something called time out. You can actually say that as well. Use that time out. <laughs> Might, there's an aeroplane going over now. You can probably hear that. Are you enjoying the aeroplane? It's only uh, it's only a small aeroplane with one propeller at it, the front. I think it's a Cessna. He always says that. It's a Cessna. I'm sure it is. Oh, Cordoba, Argentina, sunny, five degrees. That's not very warm. It's not very warm Thought at all. Thought it would be warmer than that in Argentina. Really? Mm, I don't know what the climate's like in Argentina. I always imagine it being very hot. Mm, me too. But then having said that, mm, I don't know. I was going to say something then, but it would have been controversial. Oh, don't be, don't be con we can't uh, have con controversy. Not on a Sunday. <laughs> Oh, five degrees. I thought it would be warmer. Are you near the coast by any chance? Oh, well, maybe. You, you can get quite a breeze. What are the white flowers behind it? Um, I don't actually know what that bush is called. They're a type of blossom. I should have got my little app. We don't know what that's called. I have an app that I can take pictures and then it will tell you what the actual flower is but I don't have my phone at the moment I've <coughs> bless you Steve see now Steve is sneezing we so... shouldn't be outside I think it's this <laughs> I'll take this off shall I oh <laughs> so now I think Steve oh, has, has Steve has hay fever now I think it's this it itches <laughs> Steve's got hay fever we'll that's go... going back into its into its little packet and I probably won't use that again until a production where I need to wear a, a moustache. Thank you. Would you would, do you want a tissue? No, I'm fine. Are you sure? I'll be covered in residue. Residue. That's okay. uh, residue from the glue. Can Resi you, have I got any residue? <laughs> no, I can't see any residue. That's residue. That's leftover things. Something that's left over. A residue. Have yes. I described that very well? Well, something, something that's left or something that's... If something has been placed somewhere and then when you take it away there is something left 
Yes. No, normally, something liquid or maybe something that's left behind. Glue. I didn't know Mr. Steve was going to use that word, you see. Ah, you <laughs> see, I'm just putting you on the spot. Mr. Steve is testing my English, you see. So residue, it means the thing that remains or is left behind. Yes. Quite often in liquid form, residue. So the residue is what is left behind. So I would put this glue on to stick the moustache on, but there's some left on my skin. Actually, there is. It's, it's so all that's, over. Uh, that's the residue. Yes, you have some things on your face. What would be another example of residue? We'll think of something. Well, that's a good, that's, well, that's that's a a good, good example. example. I think it is, you take yes. your moustache off your face and there is some residue yeah, of, but not <laughs> of glue. It's not like everybody is doing that. Not no. everybody is putting moustaches on and leaving residues behind. Uh, is it going to rain, Mr Duncan? I thought I felt some rain then. Better not, because I want to cut the grass afterwards. But better not, because I have lots of high-voltage electrical equipment outside. <laughs> <laughs> I think my concern is, is more concerning than your concern. It's autumn in Argentina. There's the answer, says Suka. Oh, it's that's why. It's snowing in that, many places. That's why it's so cold, or so cool, in Argentina. That's fantastic. Well... Of course. Ooh. Argentina. Oh, of course you're in the Southern Hemisphere, aren't you, in Argentina? So the, the, the seasons are, are, are reversed. They are. Compared to what we're having here. A bit like Australia. So, well, yes, yeah, so you're having autumn now. We've got another, about another four or five months before we go into autumn. Uh, oh, no, not that long. What well, would June, July, but, August? Yeah, about five months and we'll be in autumn. So, that's oh, right. Oh, that's interesting. So at the moment in Australia, it's winter. So, yes, there's a good one. But without the snow. Caridas. A residue of dirt on a potato. So you take a potato out of the ground and there'll be some dirt left on it. Mm. Residue. Yeah, something that's left behind. They're teaching us. We yes. should have come up with that example. <laughs> told us if I, if I talk about potatoes then I will feel very hungry, you see. I'm trying not to think about food at the moment. Can... Nicole says, "Have has your lovely dahlia come into bloom? Not yet. Not yet, but today I went outside. Yes. And uh, it was drooping. <laughs> uh, all the leaves were drooping. Drooping. Because it needed watering. Because it's so hot. It's so hot and I didn't water it yesterday. Droop. And uh, I went outside and it was Droop. all the leaves were drooping. Droop. Another word you can use is, is wilt. Wilt. It was wilt. wilting. Wilt. Wilting in the sun. So sometimes if it's if if you're if you're a little plant and you are trying to grow and then the sun comes out, the sun is so harsh, you will wilt. The leaves wilt. Uh, and so I gave it a water and very soon it started to perk up. But Wilt. you can describe a person if it's very hot. You can say that, oh, it's so hot I'm wilting. Because you go all limp and uh, drew because it's so hot. It's you so can hot. describe yourself as wilting mm. in the sun. Yes, uh, but, you don't, you, but you don't literally droop. No, you just, oh, I'm so hot. You sort of... Everything's sort of dropping. You're all wilting and there's, drooping. There's nothing worse than having things go droopy. Definitely not. What time is it, Steve? It's, it's 25 past three. We've been here for one hour and 25 minutes and it is Sunday live stream. We're going to have a little break because I'm going to have a look at one of my full English lessons. And we're going to have a look at some words including empower and renege. Do you know what a buzzword is? Do you ever use buzzwords? A buzzword is a word or phrase that is seen as being common and contemporary. A fashionable phrase or word is a buzzword. For example, right now, the word empower or empowerment is used a lot. To empower is to give someone the strength or motivation to do something for themselves or to give someone a sense of independence and self-worth. To empower the young or the poor. To empower women. 
to offer empowerment to those who are in need of help. It would be safe to say that empower is indeed a buzzword for this period of time. Can you see what I'm doing here? I appear to be running, but I'm not moving anywhere. I'm running on the spot. To run on the spot means that you are actively doing it while staying in one place. You can walk on the spot. You can jump on the spot. In these cases, the spot is the place we are doing these things on. The word spot can be used in other ways too. You can be put on the spot. This means that you have been placed in an awkward situation with no warning. For example, if a person asks you a question you were not expecting, we can say that they have put you on the spot. To find yourself in a situation that is hard to deal with, we can say that you are on the spot. Then there is in the spotlight. To be in the spotlight means to be the centre of attention. Something is being watched carefully. To scrutinise something or someone is to put it under the spotlight. We can also spot something. This means to notice or see something. To spot someone in the street means that you notice them. You have spotted them. I spotted a woodpecker in my garden yesterday. You can also go spotting. For example, train spotting or bird spotting. This means that you are looking out for one particular type of thing. Perhaps an unusual design of train or a rare bird. Of course, a spot can also be a mark on your skin, a circular blemish or unusual bump on your skin can be called a spot. Teenagers tend to get spots. Some animals have spots. In fact, if you look carefully, you will find that there are spots everywhere. Do you ever renege? Are you a person who sometimes renegues on a deal? The word renege is a verb that means to go back on your word or to change your mind after agreeing to do something. You say yes to something, then later you change your mind. So you renege on your promise. To renege is to break your word and go back on your promise. You have had a change of heart, so the thing you said you would do has changed. We thought the deal was on, but then he came in this morning and reneged on it. The word renege originated in Latin and in its original form meant forcibly deny. as live can be and we are outside today we thought we would do something slightly different so the whole of today's live stream has been outside uh, are you okay mr steve i'm fine it's very exciting mr steve <laughs> is here he's had a very busy week you were performing mm. on stage now do you remember a couple of weeks ago when in fact i think it was a month ago can you believe it was over a month ago we went to a wedding didn't we? We did. And you've received a lovely card. And quite often, 
when you do something nice for a person when you do something I don't know maybe you send them a card or maybe you attend their wedding or maybe uh, another special anniversary of some sort birthdays birthdays that, that quite often the person will send something called a thank you card and that's what mr. Steve has there there we go a little thank you card and and why why has that been sent that's been sent because we gave them some money at the uh, as a present to their wedding uh, and we gave them some money because that's what they wanted so normally you might buy a, a present a gift and wrap it up and give it to them uh, for their wedding day but uh, they wanted money they specifically said that they wanted money so we did that and they've sent us a thank you uh, card which is some time after the wedding when was the wedding now it was april wasn't it i think well it was about um i want to say about a month ago but maybe More maybe maybe five weeks or six weeks ago so they probably just got round to opening all their presents yes and there it is and uh, the message isn't that lovely yes thank you for spending your special day with us and for singing in the choir thank you also for your very kind gift we have put it towards our honeymoon so mr steve actually was singing at the wedding i wasn't <laughs> but mr steve was love from emma and john and they were our friends that uh, got married so uh a nice little thank you note there so if they're watching thank you for the thank you note <laughs> so we'll send them another yes we'll send them a card thanking us for the thank you card thanking them thanking them yes and we'll just keep going round and round they'll have to send us another card to thank to say them. thank you for sending us a card for thanking us for the gift thanking that you them at the wedding <laughs> so maybe maybe we will send them a thank you card to thank them for sending us a thank you card for thanking us for sending them a gift for their wedding yes that sounds good i, I really understood that <laughs> <laughs> that was about as understandable as is the play that Mr. Steve was in. That's a bit like when you when you get into a text uh, session with somebody, isn't it? You send somebody a text saying how are you uh and uh, they reply back. But then sometimes y you have to be careful what, what how you how you know because you think well I I don't this could go on for too long, couldn't it? Yes. So when do you how do you stop the text but what would you call it if you're texting somebody backwards, backwards and forwards a lot? Well, you're not you're a session. What would you no, call it? Well, you're, you're just of... you're just texting. But if you want to go, for example, you might want to go to the toilet, or you might be going out and you need to go out and get ready before you go out. Yes. But every time you send a text to this person, they keep replying back. Yes. Well, I think that person is called uh, a pain in the neck. I know, but you, but gently, you 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 want to you, you you've got a bit bored with well, it. Well, you just you just say I have other things to do. Catch you later. I Why know that's, but that's not difficult. Well, it is. It is say, difficult oh, sometimes. You're having a very long conversation via text or SMS. Well, you just say um, I'm. I will catch you later. I'm just off to do some shopping, or I'm just going <laughs> I to don't need you to do that Mr. Drew. I know I just like doing it. it it makes me feel good it gives me a thrill so yeah there you go That's because I, he doesn't text many people I'm going to take a shower now because I stink. how do you let the person down gently so they keep replying back. I've just said. And uh, that's what you do. I, you just tell them. I know. I'm asking. What do other people do? Oh, I see. Do they say gently, or oh, I'm sorry, I've got to go now, or do they just not reply? Yes, just don't reply. I think some. I think I've had people that just suddenly they're obviously bored, and they don't reply anymore. I'm going to identify that plant now. I've got this great little app mm. called Picture This or Photo This. A free app. A little app. So I'm going to see if I can find out what that white plant is over there, that white bush. <laughs> Although I only have, I only have 10% of my battery left. So that's another thing that's I hate. Really. That's another thing I hate about modern technology is the battery always runs down too quickly. So I'm just going over there. So you can you can you take over for a moment? Don't be long, Mr. Duncan. Don't leave me all on my own. All right, I can move into the camera on my own. I you, don't need you to push me there. You have centre stage. 
Well, I think it's Spirea. I think that's the name of the plant, Spirea. Uh, but we can't be certain, and we can't be certain that Mr. Duncan's app on his phone, which was a cheap, free app, will actually give us the correct answer. It's just a bush, really, with a white flower. Uh, how long it will take Mr. Duncan and his app to tell us it usually gives about six different suggestions ah. so what's it come up with mr duncan spirea i was right i was right steve was right spirea <laughs> pu pubescens what it's a bit rude pubescens let me have a look at that yes there it is it, it, it won't it won't say anything different because you're looking i know i just want to no. i just want to have a look what are you doing? Oh, I was trying to... Uh... Okay, in just those few moments, Steve has now wrecked the whole thing. What's, what is going? Oh, this is great. Sorry about that. I didn't know Mr. Steve was suddenly going to run away. Look at Mr. Steve's legs. Look at them. They're, they're so thick. Look at those legs. <laughs> you have very manly legs, Mr. Steve. Oh, he's coming back now. Uh... The leaves aren't the same. Oh. I don't think it's that one. The leaves are different. The, the leaves on here has got serrated edges. Okay, then let's Serrated. Try. That means it's uneven. <laughs> yeah, you can, ex you can explain that. <laughs> serrated. Well, uh, uh, that's, uh, can you see the, the edges of that leaf? If it will focus, which it probably won't. There we go. Can you see the edges of that leaf? It's not smooth. It's serrated. Serrated edge. So it's got that sort of... Serrated, a bit like a knife really. And the plant over there has got a lobe. It's actually got lobed. It's actually got... A, it's, it's like this. But the plant on Mr. Duncan's app has the, the leaves are more like yeah, that. I've got it now. I've got ah. it now. It would appear that. How exciting. Oh, oh that's it. Yes, yeah, that's definitely it. That's definitely. Reeves spirea. So it's still spirea, so I'm still correct. So it's a different type of spirea. Reeves spirea, it's called. Sounds like diarrhea. <laughs> can you see there it is oh. so it does work so this app even though it was free sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does so there we know we now know what the white flower over there is it is reeves spirea i've got insects crawling all over me now Steve. Well, let's identify the insect that's crawling all over me. I like the fact that this umbrella, can you see the umbrella behind me? It's starting to fall off the pole. Let me just move that. Because that's, that's because you've just strung it up with, with cheap tape. I've just wrapped some tape, sticky tape, around it. Yes, ideally you want something a bit more secure than tape. What is Mr Duncan doing? He's getting himself all wrapped up in his equipment. Very dangerous. It's not even re Mr. Duncan. <laughs> He's fallen over. He's pretending. He's pretending. He's not really fallen over. He's actually quite all right. Aren't you, Mr. Duncan? <laughs> what kind of position do you call that? <laughs> He's inviting all sorts of trouble. Bending over like that. That was very painful. What's this bird with the red face, Mr. Duncan? This bird, <laughs> it's not, it's, that's not red, that's orange. Orange. <laughs> Give us the name of that bird. Have you already done that? That is a chaffinch. A chaffinch. Fascinating. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Is the live chat still going? Let's have a look, shall we? Do we still have viewers? Where are you? F oh, I see. I think a lot of people are now talking to each other in the live chat. They've become so enthralled by what is going on. 
<laughs> I actually just injured myself then. <laughs> I've just injured myself. Serves you right for play play acting. I wasn't play acting. You were play acting. That was real. You were. You were uh, that was a real moment of time. That was. You were pretending you were acting. No, honestly, that was real. I don't think so. A lot of people are now talking on the live chat. Somali land. Somali land. Go back a bit, Mr. Duncan. Go back or forward. Back, back that <laughs> way. The other way. Make it. Make it go up. That's forward. There we go. Stop. Go back. Okay. <laughs> yes, Sue Cat. The edges of the leaf. It's like a saw or serrated. Yes, serrated. Yes. Another word you can use is jagged. 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 Well, yes, you could do. Yes, jagged. Abdi Malik from Somaliland. Oh, He's... Somalia is watching. Hello there. Hello to Somalia. No, there we go. That's... <laughs> Somali land, which I think is that the same as it's not the same as Somalia, is it? Yes. Is it? Yes. Somali land and Somalia are they the same? Ab yes. Ab <laughs> Abdi Malik is is a regular viewer on here. Yes, definitely. Oh. Yes. Yes. There you go. Be careful, Mr. Duncan. I will try to be careful, but sometimes I, I, I'm not careful. Sometimes I have little accidents. We have the live bee cam but we're still waiting for some bees to arrive and do some feeding. Look, I've actually injured myself. <laughs> I'm Says you're right. I'm actually bleeding at the moment. I'm bleeding all over the place. We might have to call an ambulance in a moment. We might have to, 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 to use words, examples of using the word set. I don't think we'll be doing that. I think we should. What we could have, I'll tell you what we could, we could have for the last 20 minutes. We could have... A mystery idiom ah let's have a mystery idiom so here we go we normally have mystery idioms on sunday so here it is here is a mystery idiom to keep you thinking and guessing for the next 20 minutes because we're going in around about 20 minutes and then i will be back with mr steve hopefully on wednesday as well we'll, we'll be back late and live so there it is what do you think it is what do you think the mystery idiom is steve's back hello steve i didn't go anywhere so where do I'm you do most of time. your where do you do most of your shopping steve online so mr steve likes to go online and do his shopping there we go only it's, because it's easier yes it is a lot easier but the only thing there are certain things that i don't like to buy through the internet and one of them is clothing so I never I never buy clothes and because because the, the reason is because I'm always scared or worried that when I get the clothing it won't be right and then you've got to send it back and that's the reason why I I don't really like buying clothing across the internet because it is it, it's such it's such a, a, a nuisance having to send things back but some people like doing that they like buying from catalogues online because uh, or, or, or you can I don't well, it's probably yes catalogs they like to buy the clothes and then try them on at home and send them back a lot of people like to do that oh no I, I don't have the um, patience because it, uh, it, it because they don't like going to shops and changing in the changing rooms I can understand that but they <laughs> it's a hassle having to send it but maybe it's not maybe we should have a go at it um, because that's that is the last thing that that's something that I wouldn't buy online would be clothes uh, food uh, gardening equipment virtually anything I won't say the name of the company that I use mostly for purchasing products but let's just say that a lot of vans come here uh, anything that I need now because I hate shopping and uh, local it's very they've made it very difficult to to shop uh, what are you showing there, Mr. Duncan? Do you see that? Look, 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 that's my blood. That, that is actually my blood there. Yes. Look. I don't think that's going to interfere with your health, Mr. Duncan. It's look. not even a. It's not even enough blood there to, to cover the head of a pin. I've I, I've bled. I'm actually bleeding. Look. I've shed my blood for for, for this English lesson. Nicole says, have we had rabbits in our garden? We have. Not this year, though. 
Not this year, no. no I'm amazed. This year we have, we've had no rabbits. I'm quite surprised by that. Somalia and Somaliland are two separate countries. Oh, OK, then. There we go. I thought they were. Oh. Well and done, Steve. Told, so thank you, Abdi Malik, for telling us that. So where's Somaliland, then? Steve? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> are they close to each other? Is Somalia and Somaliland close to each other? Oh, OK. I'm, I'm, even I'm intrigued Testing now. Testing our geography, then. I'm very intrigued. Sorry, Gracie. I'm, I, don't, I don't want to sing. I feel too embarrassed to sing <laughs> outside here. I don't think Steve's going to sing outdoors. I'd need to be prepared. Yes, and a bit drunk. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Dearest, the moonlight calls us, a dearest, the stars invite, a reckless of what befalls us, a great the enchanted night. He <laughs> started the dog barking. I started the dog barking. The dog's barking now. Yeah. a bit. That was from last night, that was from the show. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Steve starts singing, and then th there is a dog over there that keeps barking now. It's normally, if someone's singing badly, you normally say it starts the cat's don't you yes it starts the cat meowing yes if somebody or, sings very badly or you might say that it sounds like a cat yeah crying or calling yes it sounds like a cat call <coughs> so the live stream and the live chat is still ongoing yes we have some guesses on the mystery idiom well done to those who are guessing at the moment and those who have got it right i'll give you the answer later on there it is mystery idiom we Just... had a sorry go on no go on we had a bit of a close encounter yes with with uh, with our new bullocks <laughs> same to you uh, in the field didn't we there's 11 of these little little uh, creatures Yes, not creatures there. I'm, not, I'm not sure if they're little cows, bullocks, whatever you want to call them. Yes, yeah, so here we go. Some new bullocks and cows at the back of the house. And yesterday we went for a walk, didn't we? We went for a walk. And when we came back, we had to walk past them. Right past them. And uh, one of them got a bit excited and started following us. Yes. And uh, you were getting a bit scared i was getting a little worried there's, there's there's something a little worrying about about a bull or bullock following you because you're not you're not sure what it's going to do particularly if it's got horns yes and one of them as, as you've mentioned before most of them are, don't really react no very much they just sort of might look up and then they'll start eating again but there's when you when you get a a sort of a herd wouldn't what, could you describe this as a herd? It's not really big enough for a, a herd. It's probably more than 11. Uh, no, I think a herd can be more than one. Can it? Uh, or, or more than three or four. You can say a herd of, of cows. Herd or of a, cows. Or a herd of bullocks. Or a herd of cattle. Yes. Definitely. So uh, this herd, one of them was had got a bit of a spark. You could tell he was very interested the others were sort of not really interested but he followed us and you often find this in, in, in a group of animals there's always one or, or two mm. who seem to have a bit more consciousness yes they, they seem the to know they seem to know what's going on around them they're a bit livelier they're a bit more interested and uh, this one was saw us and immediately came towards us yes and uh, in quite a threatening way mm. It sort of came. So I was ready. I'd got a stick, and I was ready to uh, to give it a little whack on its yeah. face. Steve was ready to hit it with the stick. I was, uh, <laughs> but apparently all you need to do is run towards them, sort of screaming and shouting, and it, apparently it scares them off. <laughs> so uh, we'll try that next time. Maybe we can film it. That would be interesting. Watching Mr. Duncan running and screaming towards a herd of cows yes we'll try that next time maybe next week we'll do some filming and, and, and we'll go out with the with the camera and we'll do some filming of, of the the bulls or the bullocks chasing us down the hill i think that'll be quite good fun well i well I, you could go up there and i could film it from down here in the safety of the garden and uh, i should be laughing watching them chasing you down the hill <laughs> 
I don't think we've got much longer to go, have we? No, have we, Mr. Duncan. But I'm just, I'm just. There's one thing I am interested in, Steve, and that is our, our, what, what we're wearing on our feet today, because I haven't shown the viewers what we're wearing. So here we go. So let's have a little look at what we are wearing on our feet. Oh, there we go. Oh, Mr. Steve, I must say I, I like your shoes. They're My very knees look a bit knobbly. We can see Mr. Steve's toes. Can you see mine as well? There they are. <laughs> I'm wearing my lovely bright socks today because it's summer. My knees look knobbly. Yeah. You can describe someone's knees as knobbly. Very knobbly. When they're sort of a bit uneven. Yes. They stick out. They stick out knobbly. <laughs> yes. Your, your legs are so thick. I used to do a lot of running. My, my legs are very thin. I used to do a lot of running. <laughs> People often say my legs look like tree trunks. So they're, they're just, just, to, just to show you exactly what we're wearing today. We've got our shorts on. Mr. Steve is not wearing socks. I can't believe that. Mr. Steve mm. has no socks on. No socks on. I was no wearing socks. those sandals last night on stage, by yes. the way. Oh, those sandals are actually sandals on the stage. On the stage. On they the were. stage. So those sandals are actually famous. They're famous, yes. They've performed on the stage, those sandals. They have. Sadly, my flip-flops have not performed on the stage, but they are famous around the world on YouTube. And so are your stripy socks. My stripy socks are very well known now. I think they will get their own YouTube channel. I think so. So let's have a quick look at another one of my live English lessons, my full English rather. And a lot of people have asked about Mr. Lomax. They ask, where is Mr. Lomax? We miss Mr. Lomax Where's, so much. Where is he? He's, well, he's just a very, a very busy monkey. That's all I can say. He's very busy. He's a very busy monkey. Here he is now disturbing my breakfast. Breakfast time, my favourite time of the day. Here we go again. Another breakfast with Mr Slurpee. I really want to tell him how annoying his noisy eating is. And look at that porridge. That's not how you make porridge. What on earth is he wearing there? A Wolverine t-shirt, for goodness sake. Grow up, man. You are 50 years old. I really want to tell him how annoying he is. But it will only hurt his feelings. Look at him. Filling his smug face with milky porridge. And he never stops going on about English. Is there a problem? Mr. Duncan, for crying out loud, do you have to eat your porridge like that? It's so annoying. And that's not even how you make porridge. It's too weak. You always add too much milk. And what's with the t-shirt? It's a comic book character. You are not a child anymore. For goodness sake, grow up. You are 50 years old. Start acting like an adult. You are so immature and childish. It's not just one thing. It's everything about you. And another thing. You never stop talking about English. All day you go on and on about English this and English that. I really can't take it anymore.
You want to hurt me? Go right ahead if it makes you feel any better. I'm an easy target. Yeah, you're right. I talk too much. I also listen too much. I could be a cold-hearted cynic like you, but I don't like to hurt people's feelings. Well, you think what you like about me. I'm not changing. I like... I like me. My viewers like me. My students like me. Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get. Acting. Let's take one last look at the bee cam. Sadly, no bees. I don't know where the bees have gone. They've all, I think this must be their, their siesta time. Maybe, maybe all the bees have a little sleep in the afternoon. What do you think, Steve? Yes, I think that's probably what they're doing. <laughs> or I think it's what you said earlier. They know we're filming them. Uh, so they've all had a chat with each other and they said, oh, stay away from that bush. Uh, we want to ruin Mr. Duncan's live English lesson. Yes. And we don't want to appear on camera. Perhaps they're camera shy. Yes, I think so. They're Perhaps very the bees are camera shy. Just like many people, they don't like to have their picture taken or they don't like to be filmed, so they, they are very camera shy. I think Mr. Steve sometimes is a little camera shy. Do you think so? Yes, I, I like to have a prepared script. Especially if, if, if we're in public, if we're in... Oh yes, I don't like that. Mr. Steve doesn't like that. No. See, I don't, I don't care. I can go on camera and talk anywhere, but Mr. Steve doesn't like it. He's very shy. But it's not that. I just, I just get a bit self-conscious. Yes. Well, it's the same thing. You become self-conscious. Oh, oh. Insects are crawling all over me, Mr. Duncan. They are. Yes, there are a lot of insects well, flying around. Now we've got those cows at the back of us. We're going to have a lot of flies. We are going soon. The mystery idiom that I thought would be fun to do so let's have a look shall we there it is I'll give the answer a lot of people got this right pie pa in the sky pie in the sky and what's the meaning a pleasant but unrealistic plan or idea that is unlikely to happen you might view a seemingly impossible plan or concept as being pie in the sky something that is too fantastic can be yes. described as being pie in the sky so if you have a plan and maybe it is unrealistic maybe it is something that can't be achieved you can say that it is pie in the sky we'll have one last look at the live chat because i know steve loves the live chat so much <laughs> well that's interesting uh Carrie just think, uh, says, I think the bees are killed by, I think you mean ra Roundup. Oh, I see. Yes, Roundup, which is uh, which is uh, been in the press, has been in the, uh, been talked about a lot recently. It's it's a, it's a weed killer. Oh, I see. It's the thing that you spray on the plants to to keep the um, insects away as well. Is that right? Insecticide. Well, ra if it's if Caridas means Roundup, that's oh, yes. that's used for, for for killing weeds. Weed yes. killer. Weed killer. Uh, so yes, could well, but it does kill all the wildlife as well at the same time. Ah, okay then. Wolverhampton. Ah. Oh. Ying, uh, uh, Ying Hung, you can pronounce that better than I Let's can. Let's have a look. Ying Hung Seng says, Ah, Wolverhampton. Yes, we used to live in Wolverhampton for a while. Wolverhampton, my second hometown. It is. It was called the Black Country, named after the soot that covered the region. Did we talk about Wolverhampton today? I don't remember that. We haven't mentioned it, but maybe, maybe on my one of my other videos... Maybe I've mentioned it. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, 
That is why they call it the Black Country, because it used to be covered in soot. Yes, from the Industrial uh, Revolution, there were lots of chimneys everywhere. Yes, and it was very bad right up until the 1960s, really. Uh, and around the end of the 1950s, they brought in the Clean Air Act. Yes. Uh, because so, lots of people were dying from pollution. So nowadays we can't we can't make much well in certain places, certainly in areas where lots of people live, you you can't produce smoke or much much in a way of pollution. In fact, there are large areas now in the UK, large areas where smoke is forbidden. You can't light fires or produce any smoke. Fortunately. Here in the countryside, there are no laws that control that. So we can have as many fires as we want around here because many of the farmers will burn the dry straw or, or, or sometimes the leaves. They will, they will burn them. They will have big fires. And quite often in the evening, they will do it. I'm not sure they're even allowed to do that anymore, to be honest. Because oh. are, Yes, because somebody a few years ago, there was a very bad, bad pileup on a motorway in the UK because a farmer was, was burning the, uh, the leftover straw from his field. Yes. And it caused so much sort of smog and smoke across the motorway that there was a very bad uh, car pileup on the motorway. So a car accident involving mm. lots of vehicles. So I don't think your farmers are allowed to burn the fields the way they used to be able to. So what happened? All the smoke went across the motorway and people couldn't see where they were going. Yes. Oh. And somebody, uh, somebody had a firework display once as well uh, that caused so much smoke. There was a pile up on the motorway and lots of people died. Yes. I always thought that's what it was. I always thought mm. it was actually a, a, a bonfire display, a bonfire night, I think yes. it happened. I think it's happened with that. Were, yes, no, we're not killing the bees, don't worry. We're not killing the bees in this garden. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, I think they've just gone off for a rest. So no oh, bees. I can tell you now, no bees were harmed in the making of today's live stream. It is now after, oh, it's actually gone four o'clock. It's just after four o'clock. Oh mm. my goodness, I can't believe it. The, the, this, the, the live stream today has gone by so quickly, don't you think? It has, and uh, I've got to be, I'm very busy now because, I, because I've neglected the garden for the last two weeks. <laughs> I've got to go and cut the grass. <laughs> Mr. Steve. Uh, Mr. Steve has a lot of work to do. No rest for the wicked, as we say. That's a joke. We say that. If somebody's got to keep working, uh, you'll quite often say as a joke to somebody, oh, no rest for the wicked. Yes, that means you are not going to have a rest because... You're you, bad. You're, you're bad. But it's, it's always but said it's as, a, as a joke. Said it as a joke. As a joke. As a joke. Thank you, Mr. Steve, for joining me today, by the way. It's nice to have you back here after all of those weeks where you, you, you couldn't make it to the live stream on a Sunday. So will you be joining us on Wednesday? I will. Yay! One thing I need to ask you before I leave. Yes. Is that when you wrap up and finish today's live stream, would you please clear this equipment away <laughs> so that I can cut the grass? Yes, Mr. Steve is waiting to come out and, and, and cut all of the grass. Can you see the grass behind? It's, it's very long. long. It's very long. And we've been, uh, because we're outside, we've been trampling it down, trampling it, flattening the grass, which is going to make it difficult for the lawnmower to cut it. So I'm a bit annoyed about that, Mr. Duncan. But I'll can, forgive you. Can you take off your socks, Mr. Duncan, and show us your toes? Well, oh, I'm no. very, I'm very embarrassed. Don't ask that. I'm very embarrassed by my toes because they're so long. They're, they're almost like little fingers, aren't they? They are. If you lost a finger, you could have a toe removed and put in its place. Yes, I could have them swapped. I could swap my fingers with my toes. Well, in fact, a friend of mine, I think I, I said the other week, lost his uh, finger on holiday recently in yes. a freak accident. Yes. He lost his finger, the, his wedding ring got caught in something and it ripped his finger off. Yeah. And uh, he could have had one of your toes yes. put in its place. That's you it. could have well, donated him one of your toes. Well, I, I can. I can spare one. I can, I can let him have one of my toes if you want one. Andy. Is it Andy? I can't remember. I can't, you can't remember his oh, name? Oh, my name. No, I won't say who it is. No, we, we won't say Andy then. It's not Andy, is it? We'll say it is. We'll say it's Andy, but it isn't. 
Is it? No, it isn't. Is it? No, it isn't. Well, it was lovely to be part of your live stream again here, Mr. Duncan. You're welcome. I think we're going at the right time because next door's dogs come out. <laughs> so, see you all on Wednesday and uh, bye for now. Bye, bye, Mr. Steve. Bye. Mr. Steve is going now. He's gone. Thank you very much for your company. I am going as well because we have come to the end of the live stream. I didn't really want to go over two hours, but we have, unfortunately. So let's go and i will see you on wednesday <laughs> i won't be taking my socks off definitely not i will see you later and wednesday night 10 o'clock uk time for those who aren't sure i will give you the times very quickly live english every sunday every sunday 2 p.m uk time and also every wednesday every wednesday from 10 p.m late and live and don't forget they're both uk times i'm going now going indoors to have a lovely cold drink or maybe even a cup of tea as well if mr steve is going to make one i will see you on wednesday this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thank you so much for joining me today and i hope to see you again very very soon and of course you know what's coming next yes you do i say it every single time i am waving goodbye and of course ta-ta for now